So this is the thermodynamics review for exam 3. Uh, some of the um, details uh, to take into account for the exam are the following. Please remember that cell phones are not allowed. If you have one, you should have it in the back and the back should be in the front of the classroom. No bathroom break. Um, only the course equation sheets without alteration. So I will provide them. You don't have to bring any. Only authorized calculators and you have to show all the steps, use proper units, the solution steps must be neat. If they are not provided, the final answer will not be suffice to have a full grade in the, um, in the question. And finally, draw a box around the final answers. The exam will cover Chapter 6, Second Law of Thermodynamics, and Chapter 7, Entropy. And there must be some short questions and conceptual questions and then uh, two or three problems and the total time will be 50 minutes. And the learning goals for chapter 6. The first one is define the second law of the thermodynamics. Uh, remember that the thermodynamics, the second law establish the direction of a process, establish the degree of degradation of a process, and provides a theoretical limit to energy transformation. Mm, identify valid processes as those that satisfy both the first and second law of thermodynamics. There is two examples here on the left one. So we have a hot body, a high temperature body, and a cold body. Remember that the process goes the heat transfer goes from the hot to the cold. So we can never say that the process is the heat transfer is in that way. So that will be wrong. And the second law established the proper direction. Also, if we have a closed system like the one on the right hand side, and we are um, transferring uh, thermal energy in heat transfer, and we have a shaft, it will not produce a um, um, rotational movement on the right hand side. So if we start with Q, so work out is not possible. <clears throat> so this is not a valid process. Um, describe the thermal energy reservoirs, um, describe uh, reversible and irreversible processes, and heat engines. Uh, let's start with the uh, um, reservoir. So remember the reservoir is, um, um, is defined like a large body um, at certain temperature and that is in contact with our heat engine or with the, our system. But uh, the size of the reservoir is that large that uh, the temperature is not being affected by the heat transfer uh, to our system. So um, in a heat engine, we have uh, and uh, we take energy in the form of heat from the hot body and we call it QH and uh, with that we produce some uh, work net out but uh, we also have some heat that is being released uh, to the uh, low temperature reservoir so the efficiency of the heat engine is equal to the work net out divided by the total energy that is uh, input into the heat engine, which is QH. So using the balance equation, we can describe this as 1 minus QL over QH. Now we have heat engines and we also have a refrigerator. So in a refrigerator, we have is conformed by a condenser, a compressor, an evaporator and uh, expansion. So 
the direction of the process is that uh, uh, the fluid is expanding and so we have a region of low pressure uh, produced by the expansion goes to the evaporator so the evaporator is taking energy uh, from from a low temperature reservoir and so which will evaporate uh, our fluid and then it goes into a compressor so all this is a low pressure region after passing by the compressor is going to be a high pressure region then goes into the condenser and in the condenser releases energy to um, high uh, temperature reservoir so this will be th and then finally from the condenser goes back into uh, the expansion so to form the cycle uh, so in order to work we need to provide the compressor with some uh, work in so <clears throat> the work in this case is uh, um, work coming into our system and in this case we don't define um, an efficiency but we define a coefficient of performance for the refrigerator which is equal to QL divided the work net in and using the balance of energy can be expressed as 1 divided by QH divided QL minus 1 so in a refrigerator the purpose is to um, to remove energy from uh, the low temperature body now in um, in a heat pump the purpose is to provide energy uh, to the high temperature body so the coefficients of performance for the heat pump is equal to 1 divided by 1 minus QL divided by QH now how can we identify a reversible and irreversible process so an irreversible process are in general all process in nature uh, the theoretical limit of a process it will be that is irreversible uh, so reversible provides a theoretical limit for a process so remember in our refrigerator the work net in is always positive so we always need a work net it in order to be able to the, uh, refrigerate so for a refrigerator we have that the work net in is always bigger than zero and in the case of the heat engine we have that if the work net out is larger than zero so we always are going to have some heat that is going into the low temperature reservoir so therefore we never can have an efficiency of a hundred percent our next learning goal is to describe the Carnot cycle so remember the Carnot cycle is equivalent to say a reversible cycle and so it consists of four steps so the first steps um, start from point one and the, the first step is isothermal hot temperature so in this case we um, get uh, energy from a hot source in the second case is an adiabatic process so in the adiabatic process we have some work net out in the third process we have a low temperature and is isothermal so we have TL and um, 
in this case we release some energy to the low temperature reservoir and in the last process the last process is also adiabatic and goes from the low temperature to the high temperature in the case of the refrigerator and uh, the directions of the process are the opposite and in this case we need uh, some work net in now the Carnot principle the first one is the efficiency of a uh, reversible engine is or process is larger than the efficiency of an irreversible. The second process, say the second uh, Carnot principle says that if we are in between um, two states, so going from a state A uh, um, one to two via process A or via process D if A if A and D are irreversible therefore the efficiency of A it should be equal to the efficiency of B if they are reversible Now, <clears throat> how do we compare the uh, uh, dialyzed Carnot heat engine with um, with a real heat engine? Well, first of all, uh, well we have that for a reversible uh, process, what we have is that QL over QH is equal to TL over TH so we can use temperatures instead of heat and these temperatures need to be in absolute scale and so this relationship was developed by Lord Kelvin and the conclusion was that they have to have a, a absolute scale so the efficiency of an irreversible is equal to 1 minus QL over QH and the efficiency of a reversible can also be expressed as 1 minus TL over TH so for a, a, for a re reversible we can use the temperatures so definition is the same but we can use this um, identity for the temperature and the heat transfer now we need to calculate thermal efficiencies and coefficients of performance for reversible heat engine heat pumps and refrigerators so this is a summary of the thermal efficiency and coefficients of performance uh, for the refrigerator on the left hand side so this is a standard refrigerator and this is the reversible so the reversible as well we have we can replace the um, heat with temperatures and for the heat pump so we have our definition and for um, the reversible so remember the lower part is the reversible we can replace Q by the temperatures now we, ne uh, we need to know how to apply the second law of the thermodynamics to a process so remember that one of the definitions from chapter 7 okay and we are going into chapter 7 is that the entropy is a property as the pressure as the temperature and some of the others and therefore we can have a balance of entropy and remember the balance of entropy is delicate because it's not the same as the balance of en of energy so 
how can we use the entropy to quantify the second law effect? So we have a process that is moving from one state one to state two. And so we have our process. And so this process has some entropy one and this has some entropy two. So if the process is uh, irreversible, then we have that S2 minus S1 is equal to the integral from 1 to 2 of dQ over T. So dQ over T is a measure of the entropy. And so the entropy is associated with heat transfer. Now we have the increase of entropy principle. So this is for the case of a process, a reversible process. But if the process is irreversible, so what we have is that S2 minus S1 is equal to the integral from 1 to 2 of the Q over T plus an entropy generated and this entropy generated is always bigger than zero. We need to calculate the entropy changes that take place during a process of a pure substance. So remember that we can use tables in the same way that you use tables for the other situations. So we can have T and S diagram and then and this is our value that defines the different states and let me plot so some uh, isopressure line so the isopressure line will be this so this is p equal to a constant <coughs> and um, we can um, we have the same values here this is going to be sg sorry, SF, SG, and the total distance will be SFG. Now, DS is defined as DQ over T. So if we plot T over S, that means that from this equation we can have by separation of variables, TDS equal to DQ. So from point one, state one to state two, uh, what we have is that uh, the inter so the integral of TDS is equal to the heat transfer from one to two. So if we plot it in the TS diagram. So the integral underneath, the area underneath the um, TS curve is the heat transfer. Similar as we did uh, for the work when we have the enthalpy. Now the entropy measures the molecular disorder. So let me write it. Defines the direction of the process and it's a measure of the microstates of energy. So how can we enunciate the third law of the thermodynamics? Remember the third law of the thermodynamics is related with the, the zero temperature. So we said that the entropy of a crystalline substance is zero at absolute zero temperature. Now <coughs> we have to find the differential expressions for TDS. So the differential expressions for TDS are two and they are called the Gibbs equations. So we have two Gibbs equations and they both express TDS. So in the first case we have that TDS is equal to 
dv plus p dv sorry du the differential of energy plus p dv and in the second case is the differential of the enthalpy plus v dp so in the first case is uh, energy the second case is enthalpy and uh, on the first case is p multiplied by the v and in the second case is v multiplied by dp so they are swapped so for incompressible media like solids and fluids so we have that delta s is equal to c average multiplied by the natural log of t2 divided by t1 now to calculate the entropy changes during a, a process for ideal gases we cover different ways of doing it so the general expression is um, s2 minus s1 equal to the integral from 1 to 2 of cv uh, dt over t plus r natural log of v2 over v1 so this came from the first Gibbs equation and then we have our second expression uh, with um, was with the second Gibbs equation so we have s2 minus s1 equal to the integral from 1 to 2 of cp in this case is as cp because cp is associated with the h and divided by the temperature uh, dt minus r and multiplied by the natural log of p2 over p1 now we have two ways of solving this so one is the uh, approximate form approximate in which um, we just say that uh, uh, the specific volume or the spe uh, uh, constant volume or the specific um, heat at constant pressure uh, is constant so we can take it out of the integral and so in both of the cases we can have like uh, CV average multiplied by the natural log of um, natural log of t2 over t1 plus our natural log of v2 over v1 we could do so the same thing for this expression so we have the approximate which is um, equal to cp average multiplied by the natural log of t2 over t1 minus r natural log of p2 over p1 but in the second case we have also an exact solution which is tabulated in tables so the exact is um, in terms of s the, the integral is calculated as s2 not minus s1 not minus r natural log of p2 over p1 so and in tables only we have this relationship for the second gibbs equation so we don't have that relationship for this integral um, additionally if um, the process um, is isentropic so we have let me write it here we have the relative pressure so we have pr1 divided by pr2 equal to p1 over p2 and also we have vr1 divided by vr2 which is equal to v1 over v2 so this is valid only for isentropic process so we need to derive a reversible steady flow work relationships so 
so the work reversible for is defined as the integral from 1 to 2 of VDP plus the change of kinetic energy plus the change of potential energy now if it's incompressible so for incompressible so and this is equal so for incompressible and there is no change in the specific volume so therefore we can factorize this term and so we have that the work um, reversible is equal to V multiplied by P2 minus P1 plus delta kinetic energy plus delta potential energy and uh, one of the things that you should identify in the different compressor turbine valves is where can we simplify these changes of delta kinetic and delta potential energy now mm, because uh, the isentropic um, devices are the most efficient devices um, one option is to compare the devices the actual device against the isentropic device because they are the best possible ones so we have turbine and compressor so in the left hand side I'm going to have a turbine and in the right hand side I'm going to have a compressor so in a turbine and uh, when we take energy from the system we drop the pressure from uh, the fluid so this is uh, P1 and this is P2 so we are in a high pressure to a lower pressure so the most efficient process is going to be the isentropic so the isentropic will be a vertical line so it goes from 1 to 2S that we call the 2S the isentropic but the actual process in real life it will be something like that so it will go to 2A the actual process so we know that the um, in a turbine an ideal turbine we can take all this energy well all this enthalpy um, but in the real life the amount it will be shorter by this let me write it here so this is this is the difference that we cannot achieve with an actual turbine so the efficiency of a turbine is equal to H1 minus H2A divided by H1 minus H2S now for a compressor is the other way around so we are moving uh, fluid we are compressing fluids from one pressure P1 to a higher pressure P2 so this is 0.1 and uh, we move isentropically to, to this point so we are adding energy to compress in real life we are have to add more energy so this is the actual process and this is the isentropic so this is 0.2s and this is 0.2a so the efficiency for a compressor or a pump is equal to well for a pump is equal to V multiplied by P2 let me put it for a pump P2 minus P1 divided by H2A minus H1 so meaning that uh, mm, uh, the energy that um, that um, this is the energy due to the to the isentropic that we have to add compared with the energy of the um, actual process so in the case of a compressor it will be um, H um, two S minus H1 divided by H2A minus H1. 
Now, we need to define the uh, entropy balance in a system. So if we have a system, and the balance of energy is straightforward because energy in is an equal to energy out in a steady state and uh, energy in minus energy out is equal to the change of energy in time but for the case of um, system the entropy in and the entropy out so the balance of energy is telling us that the entropy in minus the entropy out plus the entropy generated in the process it should be equal to the change of entropy in the system now <coughs> there are only two possible mechanisms to transfer entropy so the first one is heat transfer so the entropy is due to the heat transfer so the Q over T and if T is constant so we have that the change of entropy is equal to Q over T and mass transfer which involves a control volume So in this case, we have that the mass flow rate multiplied by entropy out minus entropy in is equal to uh, the rate of change of entropy in the system. Uh, well, this is this if there is not heat transfer due to if there is no change of uh, entropy due to the heat transfer so this will be the term that is uh, depends only in the in the heat transfer so this will be zero if the if, if the system is adiabatic so we only have that or we have two the q over t and mass flow rate multiplied by s out minus s in so in a closed system, we don't have this term. So in a closed system, because we don't have mass flow rate. So in a closed system, we have that the change of entropy in the system is equal to the mass multiplied by the entropy at state 2 minus the entropy at the state 1. And this basically cover all um, chapter 6 and chapter 7 for the exam.